Hey everybody, Steve here, and today is the kickoff day for the 4L80E swap. Right next to me here is uh, the new 4L80E, and up there is the 4L60E, obviously removed from the vehicle. Uh, I have detailed videos on how to remove the 4L60E from the vehicle. I'll leave a link for you in the description below. It would be really neat if the 4L80 was a bolt-in replacement, however, it is not. Uh, it's actually pretty involved. Uh, the 4L80 is bigger, it's heavier, and it's longer than its 4L60 counterpart. So that means a lot of stuff is gonna have to change. Now, what I'm talking about here is a 2002 Chevy Tahoe with a 5.3 in it, and it is a 4x4. So I'm going to be talking uh, as it pertains to two drive shafts and a transfer case. What I have in my hand here are pages and pages of notes that I have compiled from at least 20 different sources on the internet over the last month. And my goal here with this video is to try to consolidate all of this information into one video uh, so that hopefully it can shorten the learning time for those who are coming after me. Let's talk about a short list of what is necessary. And I'm talking four wheel drive here, okay? So when you do this 4L60 to 4L80 swap, you need a new flex plate, um, Obviously, you're going to need a floor L80. You're going to need a torque converter. You're going to have to make modifications to your cross member or get a cross member. Uh, new wiring harness or do the wiring yourself if you're good at that sort of thing. I am not. I bought the harness. There is a high likelihood that your 4L80E is going to come with a different output shaft than your 4L60. So you're going to have to get a transfer case adapter so that your transfer case will mate up with your 4L80. You're also going to have to worry about your existing dipstick tube is not going to work. You're going to have to get a new one or modify something. I just bought a new one. so and your computer's not gonna know what to make of your new 4L ADE, so there's gonna be some PCM programming involved there. I'll get more into that a little bit later. But for now, I wanna talk about my specific situation, uh, what I've done to cut some corners on this big long list, and hopefully I can distill a month's worth of research down to a few minutes for those of you who are on the brink of trying to decide whether you wanna do this or not, or whatever. So step one is obviously getting the 4L60 out of your existing vehicle. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it's not easy, but I just know that after blowing a couple of these up, when, once I get the 4L80 in there, it's gonna definitely be worth it. So my story real quick is I've had all kinds of horsepower to the engine. I blew that thing up on the side of the road and so that I don't forget to mention it, the very, very first thing that I'm gonna do is blow some of this cooler clean through the lines to clean out uh, not one, but two transmission coolers all right so cooler clean that's my number one thing on my list uh, number two thing on my list is a 4L80 e I got my 4L80 from Transmission Depot in Florida and I'm hoping to make mid fives while at the same time have daily driver drivability so uh, this thing will never see a track or at least I don't think it will um, that's not the intention right now a lot of the stuff that I bought and the way I had these things configured is predicated upon those desires. Your wants or needs may be different. Obviously, you're gonna make changes to your build accordingly. But here's the, uh, here's the details on my uh, 4L80E obtained from uh, Transmission Depot. Uh, I'll also include their uh, contact information. Um, I wanna do a shout out to the guys down there. They were amazingly helpful. I've never done this before. I had a lot of stupid questions and you know, you, you really do need to ask a lot of questions because this is a, a tricky install. All right, so first thing I wanna do is do a real quick comparison. This is the 60E, this is the 80E. You know, looking at them like this, you really can't see the difference. But let me just go ahead and tell you right now that the 60E is 150 pounds and about 23.5 inches, while the 80E is 236 pounds and 26.4 inches. That is the deal with the transmission itself, okay? All right, so let's get some of this easy stuff out of the way. You are gonna need a new dipstick. This is an adjustable dipstick. It's made by Locar. You can see the uh, model number there, XTD-3518FM. I got this one off of Amazon, and I will leave a link to this in the description below. 
So the new 4L80 did not come with a neutral, neutral safety switch and I broke my old one, so I bought a new one. Uh, I also got this on Amazon, it was like 40 bucks. Here's another easy, easy one, or at least it was an easy decision for me. I don't know squat about elect electric stuff. So this is uh, made by Michigan Motorsports. This is the adapter. Uh, apparently, I guess the 4L80's got two, two speed sensors on it, whereas the 4L60 only has one. So this guy right here will allow you to wire things up uh, much more easily than doing the pinouts yourself. Um, a lot of guys do do that. I'm not that smart, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, let's talk about a very, very important topic. Let's talk about the torque converter. I got my torque converter from Circle D, and I'll go ahead and put up here on the screen all of the specs on my torque converter. I did opt for the more expensive um, billet, and here's the thing about Circle D and what they did for me which of course they'll do for you too, is um, it is a 4L80E torque converter, but look at the bolt pattern. It's actually got the same bolt pattern as my 4L60E. So I could actually use my flex plate off of my 4L60E. In the event that you do not get a torque converter from Circle D or one of their you know like quality competitors, remember that your 4L, and you, and you order a 4L80 torque converter, remember your 4L80E torque converter is going to come with the six bolt pattern. So you're going to need to get a new flex plate. And I'm almost hundred percent sure that you're going to get some, you're going to have to get some sort of flex plate spacer as well. For me, because they made it this way with the three bolt pattern, um, my flex plate was actually all tore up. Um, it was, it was in pretty bad shape. It's right there. I opted to get a new one. Uh, this is from Hughes. It is a HP 4004X. Uh, I believe I got this on, this I got on Amazon. So this is a dished flex plate, which means it's, it's raised up here in the middle. This one does not require the spacer at all. This is actually pretty darn close to my stalker right there. So last word on the flex plate is, is that if you really want to go with a cheap alternative, uh, just get a flex plate and a spacer from a three quarter uh, ton GM truck that originally came with a 4L80E. If you get a 4L80E out of a junkyard, there is a high likelihood that this output shaft is going to have 32 splines. So what you're going to need to do if you've got a four wheel drive is you're going to need to get an input gear for your transfer case and swap it to the 32 spline now. My situation's a little bit different. I got my 4L80 from Transmission Depot and I was asking about this and they said that I could opt for a heavy duty hardened 27 spline, which I totally went for so that I didn't have to do anything at all with my transfer case. So this guy right here is the, uh, the tail end of the 4L60 and uh, guess what? It is not compatible with the 4L80. So uh, I think I'm gonna need another, I think this is called a transfer case adapter, I guess. So I'll go look for that on the internet and pop up a picture of it. All right, let's talk about some of the other stuff that we need to talk about. This is my stock cross member and the 4L80E is about two inches longer. So I'm gonna go with the recommendation of a bunch of people that have taken a piece of angle iron like this and essentially weld it right there and then add the holes and then reinforce it and all that stuff. All right, the last couple pieces of the puzzle are the drive shafts. I got a brand new front drive shaft. Here's the model number 15182094. It seemed to be kind of the, the go-to recommendation in all the forums. I could have probably parted this from a truck, from a junkyard. Uh, I called around, there weren't any near me and I just figured I'd pull the trigger. My rear drive shaft, I actually had shortened. Uh, I believe it was one and 11 sixteenths. Don't quote me on that because I haven't test fitted it yet, but that seemed to be the, the number that I was able to find in, my, in all my research. It was shortened and balanced by a guy in Charlotte. I'll leave his information in there as well. And of course, the last thing is uh, obviously tuning. I'm gonna, I'll do a segment swap there. And then um, transmission lines. 
So the transmission cooler lines are different on the 4L80 than they are on the 4L60. So you're either going to need to lengthen the ones that you have or get new ones. I've actually got some lines laying around from an old project that I actually never used. So I might take a stab at, at using these. If I can't make that work, then I'll just go ahead and um, extend the ones that I have. One other fundamental difference between the 4L60 and the 4L80, there's the 60. You can see that the bell housing goes all the way around the torque converter, whereas in the 4L80, it does not. So I picked up this dust cover. Another thing about on Amazon.com, there's your model number right there. I'll also include a link to it in the description. I think I'm running out of batteries. I hope you found this helpful. I hope I was able to take my one month learning journey and distill it down into a few minutes for you. Um, Obviously more videos to come. As I get into this, uh, I'll try to share my lessons learned. Hope you found the video valuable. Uh, if so, please like, comment, and definitely subscribe because we're gonna do this whole 4L80 thing. There is a turbo in the uh, uh, passenger seat of the Tahoe right now, which will be coming down the line. And then of course, those of you who follow the channel know uh, we've got Matt's uh, 1500 Ram truck across the street. Uh, here's a little bit of footage of his motor, which actually arrived earlier today. And I, Matt and I are going to be getting together and we're going to um, put the engine back in his Dodge. And of course, uh, I'm really, really, really stoked about uh, getting this 4L80 in. So uh, appreciate you watching, appreciate your views, and I will see you in the next video.